Welcome to the 11th lecture on business process mining. In today's lecture, we are going to be discussing process mining algorithms. The reason why we are discussing those algorithms is that in order to fully understand what the results mean that different process mining tools are going to give us, we have to also have an at least an intuitive understanding of how the underlying process mining algorithms work and what are their limitations. We will begin with looking at how to discover BPM and process models. And one of the basic algorithms for doing that is the alpha miner. It is simple, limited, however, it is not robust. Of course, there are other algorithms, such as heuristics miner, which is robust to noise, fast, but can produce incorrect models. Inductive miner, which ensures that models are rock structured and correct. And the split miner, which produces deadlock-free, but not necessarily structured models. In this part of the lecture, I am mainly going to focus on the alpha miner. However, in the third part of the lecture, I will also be covering the split miner. So as mentioned, we will begin with the alpha miner. And the reason why we begin with the alpha miner is that it is a relatively straightforward algorithm that you could actually do on paper if you really wanted to. It was first introduced in 2013, and it is arguably one of the most basic process discovery algorithms. It is based on the directly follows relations between activities in the event log and follows relatively simple rules to create a BPMN model. The basic idea of the alpha algorithm is to rely on ordering relations. And those relations, there are four types. We have direct succession, we have causality, parallel, and unrelated. To understand how those relations are found from an event log, let's take a look at an example. Here we have three cases, A, B, C, D, A, C, B, D, A, E, F. Now based on these case variants, we can infer multiple different ordering relations between the activities. For example, there is a direct succession from A to B, because there is at least one case where A is immediately followed by B. However, we can also say that there is causality between A and B because since there is one case where A is followed by B, but there is no cases where B is immediately followed by A. We can also infer some parallel relations, such as B occurs in parallel with C and vice versa, of course. And some unrelated activities. For example, A is unrelated to D and also A is unrelated to F because there is no direct succession relations between those activities. Now the idea, once you have those ordering relations figured out, is to put them in a table that we consider the log footprints. For the example log shown here, we have the following footprints table. And here we can see that A is directly followed by B, A is also directly followed by C, B and C occur in parallel, meanwhile D and A do not have any relation between them. Now the alpha algorithm is going to use this table and apply a series of patterns in order to create a BPMN process model. The first of those is a simple direct succession. And this is going to be used when you have a direct succession from A to B and none of the following patterns hold. So what are the following patterns? We have A is directly succeeded by B, A is directly succeeded by C, and B and C do not occur in parallel. In this case, we put an XOR split between those activities as shown here. Conversely, if we have B is followed by D, C is followed by D, and B and C do not occur in parallel, then we use an XOR join. For parallelism, we also, we again look at the direct directly follows relations, so A directly followed by B, A directly followed by C, and B and C occur in parallel, then we use a parallel split gateway. And for a join, we see that B is succeeded by D, C is also succeeded by D, and B and C occur in parallel. And this is going to give us the parallel join gateway. But let's try to apply those patterns now in practice. This is the event log that we had before. The alphabet that we have here is simply A through G. The initial activities are A, 
and the final activities are G. Let's take a look at the footprints that we had before, and we will go through it from top left to bottom right. We see that A is followed by B, we see that A is also followed by C, and we see that B and C occur in parallel. Based on this information, we can place the following elements on our process map. Then we go back to our footprints, and we start looking at the following activities. So we see that B is followed by D, we see that C is also followed by D, and, as we saw before, there is a parallel relationship between B and C. So this is obviously going to give us our AND join gateway. Continuing on, we will see that D is followed by E, D is also followed by F, but this time there is no relation between E and F, thus indicating that now we need an XOR split gateway. And finally, we can see that E is followed by G, F is followed by G, and as, before, as we saw before, E and F have no relation between them, thus we can use an XOR join gateway to finish the process map. Now while the alpha algorithm is relatively easy to understand and easy to implement, it has some severe limitations. One of those limitations is that it kind of assumes that all possible traces of the process model must be in the log. As a result, in some cases, it cannot actually figure out the activities occurring in parallel, even though a human user would find it relatively obvious. Then it can't deal with self-loops, that is, B followed by B followed by B. In fact, if you have a trace saying A, B, C, and another trace saying A, B, 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 C, then the alpha minor is going to consider them as the same trace. And it also has difficulty understanding short loops. That is, in case of the alpha minor, a short loop is going to always be represented as parallelism. Now, there are ways how to get around these uh, limitations, and the main idea here would be to figure out and consider the frequency of the ordering relations that you are using to build your process map. One of the approaches that does this is the heuristics minor. However, in this part of the lecture, I will not go into details about it. And now, in the next part of the lecture, we are going to look at quality of process discovery, different metrics, and also how the discovered process map might look like when we are using different process discovery algorithms.